Okay, so this is the fun part about getting the anti-theft alarm horn out. Uh, this is the driver's side. As you can see, I've, <laughs> I've uh, had to lower the muffler away. Uh, if you look up inside here, that black, uh, there you go, I can get a better, that black patch up there with a hole in it, that's the bolt hole for the the uh, bracket and also uh, as you can see here that's the that's the wire that was connecting the uh, the horn so that's the positive lead and there's the negative lead the white wire which comes from the flasher uh, so that that bolt actually held the ground from the flasher up in that hole up in there. Uh, in order, to, it's not really hard once you get the, to take off. Once you get the muffler down, it's basically just a, a half inch ratchet, uh, as long as you can get your arms up in there. So that's the removal process. After bench testing the horn, I determined that it's not working. So what I'm going to do is take it apart uh, to see what's going on on the inside and see if I can um, basically uh, rebuild it. In order to, to get to that, uh, these, these are all riveted together. So these rivets need to be removed. There's, there are five rivets in total. Um, and I'll remove those by uh, drilling them out. And I'm using a 3 16th inch drill to do that. Uh, and also to make it easier to get to, uh, I just need to remove the, the horn. And this is a plastic, or, or the, the, uh, the funnel here. It's uh, just a piece of plastic and it screws into the bottom. So I'm going to do that off camera and um, start going through the drilling process. Well, I uh, learned my lesson. Uh, Hand drill is not the right way to do this. And it takes more than just a 3 16 inch drill bit. I also need a 3 8 So I do 3 16 to go through the hole um, below the flange. And then the 3 8 to to take the the top of, uh, of the rivet head off. And then use the, just a nail punch to, and, an, and an anvil to... Uh, drive it through. Now, I also figured out <laughs> that there's more than uh, five rivets here. The other one's hidden. Um, if I turn this over and look at it, there's another rivet right here, but it's not showing up on this side. So what I have to do is, you can barely see it here, um, right there. So that has to be driven out as well. Um, I'll, I'll drill that and drive it out with the, um, with the nail punch as well. All right, so to make sure I remember the orientation of this, the uh, rivet without the boss on it goes towards the support and the uh, rivet boss with the hoop on it goes at uh, three o'clock. So one o'clock, or well, let's see. <laughs> let's call that 12 o'clock and two o'clock. <clears throat> now when I take the cover off, you can see the uh, sound making part of this, and that's also oriented so that the flats are at, um, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6, and 9. And then if I take that off, one-handed. Let's see. See if I can get that off. I'm going to take that off off camera here. All right. So now that I've got that off, you can see. Whoop. So now that you got that, I got that off again at 
the orientation here. Looks like they got some gook in here. Either, yeah, that's just that's just nasty. All right, so I gotta. I'm gonna figure out how to disassemble this. I'll move it around, and yeah, it looks like maybe something built a nest up in here. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay, let me see what else I can do with this. I did a voltage test across the uh, the casing and the coil wire. And uh, the coil is toast, and I guess I could have seen that. What I, what I originally thought was something that may have been uh, nesting inside of here. It's actually melted plastic, and this coil has a, as you can see in here, there's a, this, this is a plastic here, and if you look inside, that casing is completely off. Kind of hard to see, I guess, uh, from a camera. But there's the there's the coil. That that's all melted. So this this horn is toast. Um, it's really not rebuildable from here. In order to do that, I'd have to break that spot weld. And so I'm not I'm not about to do that. So uh, I'm gonna go go to Plan B. So here's the bench test of all the components to make sure that this works before I install it. I've got a new lock cylinder because the old one was broken. A uh, new horn because the old horn, was the coil was melted. Here's the existing uh, relay. This is actually a latching relay. First time I ever worked with something like that. And that's the flasher. And you can see the colors are all, except for the red, which should be a pink wire. I don't have any of that. So this, imagine this uh, red is being pink. Um, so this is power. This is the switch to make power go to the pink. The pink then goes to the horn and also to the relay. The black wire is the ground and I've got that hooked up to a battery and, and uh, also uh, into a terminal block here. Um, so that's hooked in and on the flasher, the um, the this white wire uh, goes to uh, the flasher and also to the relay. When this flasher is touching ground, that means it is um, uh, basically that means the switch is open on the door or the hood, and that is grounding out. And the way this system works is once the the uh, latching relay is armed by the turning the switch on so I just do that by activating that um, now I've got uh, power going to the horn and uh, the horn is also uh, hooked to the relay as a ground the, the yellow wire is the ground and um, once I complete the ground circuit by opening the door uh, this will go off and even when I release the horn or, re, or, or uh, put this or pull this off of the ground, it will still go because the latching relay is is latched and it is still seeing um, still seeing ground from uh, the, the car. So um, the only way to turn it off then is to turn off uh, is to um, turn the switch. So. This whole system is activated by the ground. So let's try it out. All right, I'm opening the door. Okay. And that's it. That's how it works. Pretty cool, huh? One of the issues with the alarm system is that on the driver's side, the um, switch was completely missing and uh, the, the backing plate was also completely missing. So I ended up uh, fabricating uh, a bracket out of some scrap sheet metal and, uh, 
and a nut and please don't uh critique my welding <laughs> but this will hold together so i'm going to stick this in through the back um the back panel here uh and uh what i'll end up doing is uh, um using a pop rivet to hold it in place so i'll show you what it looks like when it's done the hole in here is really tight and the only way to get that plate in is to use a piece of wire and uh, knot it through one of the holes and then um, basically pull it through with the wire and then hold it in place with a bolt once you get it through. Uh, now I can uh, uh, pop rivet this in. All right, all riveted in. Looks pretty good. I may uh, put a washer behind this when I take it back out, but but it's it's working. To pull the wire through the access panel in the back, I've got a wire I've uh, strung through already, and I'm just going to pull it through, kind of like what I did for the, the weldment, and just, and we have to mess around with this a little bit, kind of hard one-handed. And I'll do that off camera. Yeah, I had to. I had to use two hands, but uh, it does come through. It's, it's a little tight, but I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to uh, put the terminals on now, and a little bit of heat uh, shrink on on here, so that uh, there's a, a metal hole inside there, and I don't want the the wires to chafe. So I'll I'll put a little bit of uh, heat heat shrink on that as well. Here's the uh, crimp terminal. Not bad, but not perfect. I got the, the crimp on the uh, casings a little bit wonky, but let's see if I can get it. But uh, it's it's good on the it's good on the wire. So I just have to repeat that two more times and then I'll insert the terminals into the uh, pin switch. Well, there it is all assembled. Terminals are in. When uh, the door hits the plunger, there's the contacts. When the door is closed, the contacts aren't touching. When the door is open, the contacts are touching and grounding out the circuit. That's how it works. When you're uh, screwing in the fitting, hold on to the plunger and then just spin this. The plunger will um, make sure if, the if you're holding the plunger straight, the wires will not spin. So you, you don't want to twist the wires up inside the um, inside the door frame so just hold on to the plunger the uh, horn will be assembled up inside the fender but uh, unfortunately uh, I gotta bend this bracket uh, the back of the horn will sit flush to the fender. So I've got to at least clear that nut. And I also have to make sure that uh, this is pointing downwards so it's not um, sounding into a fender. So it'll get freer sound coming out of it. And I need to hook the ground to the uh, ground bolt. Um, and the uh, the white wire coming in. So I'm going to orient this such that that uh, bracket is facing at this angle, and I'm going to put a bend into it so that it'll it'll uh, it'll actually be able to be assembled. So I'm going to do that off camera and show you what it looks like. So I just bent it in a vise. That should do it. That'll give enough clearance. There it is, all installed and connected. So that should 
That should work. This is why I had to replace the lock cylinder. As you can see, it's missing a tang. So I'll uh, show you how I'm reinstalling the new one. The gasket has some indentations on it to fit the fit around the protrusions. If you don't orient it right, it's going to look like an egg and will look bad. So make sure you orient it the correct way. Okay, so there it is installed. Got the tang on the passenger side. Pink wire on the passenger side and orange on the driver's side. I oriented it that way because the orange is coming in from the driver's side and the pink is going out. Kind of hard to see, but there it is installed from the inside. And you can see the clip going from the holding the cylinder in it. I installed it from the, the driver's side. So we can get a better view. Yeah, there you go. The flasher and the relay go in the compartment right behind the passenger seat. And you can see I've installed the flasher with the white and yellow wires. The relay will get assembled using a 3 8 inch, actually the head of a 3 8 inch bolt. Um, and uh, it'll just go in here and get connected to the white, pink, and black wires. Okay, that is it's that is it in its installed orientation. Thank goodness I'm working in a convertible. I'm not sure how you get into this uh, in a coupe. <laughs> All right, time to test the system. I'm gonna arm it. There, it's on. And then we're going to walk around and open the door. Woohoo! Now, I'll be honest, I've tested the other door um, that um, I did the terminal on, and it's not working perfectly yet, um, but I will show you that as well. So, again, armed. And here we go. So it's not working on its own. I do have to kind of... Yeah, so something's not... There it goes. Okay, so I got a little bit of tweaking to do on that, on that one, but it should be good.